recording from a truck stop in Alamogorda. Is that right? I think so. Okay, Alamogorda. Hey, we're in New Mexico. And you said we're in Mexico? New Mexico. Did we're I say Mexico? New... <laughs> we're in New Mexico. We're in New Mexico, not the old Mexico. Uh, anyway, so uh, about 24 to 30 hours ago, I posted a video doing a giveaway. Um, and Claire is going to pick five people to win one of the five uh, postcards. So she's just going through the comments there. What are you looking for exactly, Miss Claire? Uh, you know, I don't, I don't really know. This All right. Kind of a lot of pressure. Okay. Honestly. So what? What? Oh, I see Claire Dactyl. That one wins. Okay. So she's got a winner already. So what we're gonna do is, uh, I'll have her type out, copy, and then paste. You won. Uh, respond with your email address. Uh, I think that's the easiest way to do it for me. Um, so go ahead, you want to write a reply? Internet's a little bit slow. We'll get back to you after the fifth <laughs> one. Here are the cards that I picked out. These are from the Visitor Center at Big Bend. Uh, also I have the Carlsbad over here and I have Guadalupe Mountains. Those I will announce in a future video. I'll try and space them out like a week. I know when I watch videos sometimes I binge watch maybe like seven, ten, sometimes more videos. So I want to space them out so people have an opportunity to win. And just to be clear, I am choosing the winners 24 hours after the video giveaway went up. However, the, this video won't be posted for another six days, so I'll ch I, I'm choosing it the winner within 24 hours, but it will be, and I, I'm commenting here as well, within 24 hours, 30 hours, but then this video will be six days behind or so, because that's how I've been rolling right now. Do you have any tips for future postcard winners in the comments section? I don't know. I still don't even know how I'm doing this. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, y'all. <laughs> So she's going by uh, chronological order. We start, start at the bottom. Now we're going up to the top. This is hard. <laughs> Claire, here, why don't you just spin it and stop on one? No, she, you do it. Why? Come on, you got this. Two left. Two left. You got this, Claire. Why don't you close your eyes? And then go like this on the trackpad and then stop. Or, and then... Claire Bear? <laughs> Clarodactyl's having a little trouble. All right, I'm just going to spin it here just like Wheel of Fortune. All right, there we go. Roscoe Adam, boom. Winner. I believe we've got one, one more left. Flaming Storm. All right, there you go. Okay, now <laughs> for the rest of today... We're going to go over to the White Sands and possibly some petroglyphs. This is hard. <laughs> Claire, here, why don't you just spin it and stop on one? No, she, no, you do it. Why? Come on, you got this. Two left. Two left. You got this, Claire. Why don't you close your eyes and then go like this on the trackpad and then stop or, and then, Claire Bear? <laughs> Clarodactyl's having a little trouble. All right, I'm just going to spin it here just like Wheel of Fortune. All right, there we go. Roscoe Adam, boom. Winner. I believe we've got one, one more left. Flaming Storm. All right, there you go. Okay, now <laughs> for the rest of today... We're going to go over to the White Sands and possibly some petroglyphs. This is the Three Rivers Petroglyph site. There are over 21,400 petroglyphs. Um, I'll briefly go through 
what this is uh, all about here. Three Rivers petroglyphs are an outstanding examples of prehistoric Jordana Mor Magolan rock art. The basaltic ridge rising above the Three River Valleys contains over 21,000 petroglyphs, including masks, sunbursts, wildlife, handprints, and geometric designs. The number and concentration of petroglyphs here makes this one of the largest and most interesting rock sorry it's windy uh, rock art sites in the southwest all right so basically this is like the mac daddy petroglyph site this is the place this is so anyways uh there's two little trails uh this is the first one very short second one quite longer we'll begin on the short one the first people came here 10,000 years ago and hunted bison, mammoths, and camels. Camels? Camels. American camels. That's quite crazy. 10,000 years ago is a long time ago. They have a warning to watch out for mesquite spines. Oh, interesting. You Your favorite tree. <laughs> a uh, reconstructed home from 1,000 years ago. And that was to keep uh, warm in the winter and cool in the summer. Here we go. This is a home of a later period. Uh, they believe that the women were actually five feet tall. Claire Bear. My size. My people. <laughs> Fun size. <laughs> and the men were five foot four. Definitely a lot shorter than me. I don't know if this is original or a reconstruction. It doesn't say. I'm going to guess that this was a re reconstruction. It was like concrete. I don't think Native Americans had concrete. Or their ancestors. Mm-hmm. I believe. You are correct. So <laughs> this is a D Adobe service house. And uh, what Claire was saying is that they would bury their dead ancestors under their own house. That's uh, a little creepy. And then put the beds like right on top of it because they didn't have like beds they just like slept on the floor yeah <laughs> for everybody who said i should get a dog this is why i don't have a dog well i'm kind of dirty too in the bus and kind of require a lot of attention just like a girlfriend <laughs> <laughs> oh i kid you not we were parked right here, about 50, what, 50 to 100 yards, about 100 yards, there is a, a right-hand turn, then you walk up here another, say, 50 yards, and off to the right, there are our first petroglyphs. So I am very gingerly walking across these rocks to show you guys that is something, and here are more somethings. This looks like some kind of animal, has four legs and a tail, and possibly horns. Um, there's another one right here. There's going to be too many of these to show everything, but you get the idea. There are 21,400. I don't know how they exactly counted that, but here's another example. And there's another one over there on that rock. And that's a pretty clear, distinct um, petroglyph. You can see them like all the way up there. There's two right there. There's a bird right there. That's right. There's some kind of like a, a bird type figure Thunderbird. here. Thunderbird? That's what they call it, right? Yeah. Thunderbird. Thunderbird. And then there's like an aura looking thing. Yeah. There's, and then there's tons. Yeah. Basically, on that big rock up there. It is a. If you're, if you're into this stuff, you're going to be like a kid in a candy store. This is super cool. Well, she's like a kid in a candy store. She's into this. That's what I uh, looked like before my haircut yesterday. No kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Let's check out how 
well preserved this is. This is on the uh, information pamphlet. Uh, you can see the shape, uh, so I don't need to explain it. What was the significance of it? Um, yeah, it's right so there, it same is, rock. It says the circle and dot motif is related to the Quetzalcoatl. Quetzalcoatl. Uh huh. Other researchers suggest the dots represent corn or a population count. These early ancestors invented Pac-Man. Robots. Robots? It looks like a robot. But Pac-Man's not a square. I just pointed out an interesting find. What do we have here, Claire? A three-dimensional face. That's true. So on one side of it, you see half of a face, but once you start to move and rotate towards the other side, the other hemisphere of the face is revealed, along with... A mohawk. Some kind of something on the head. Well, and, it's, and the thing it said, like, they also use, like, the rock's natural features to, like, use it. So, like, there's a little bump right there, and they, like, use yeah. that for the eye. Right there. Eyeball. This is so cool. I mean, there's literally, we are climbing around very delicately, carefully. There's no other way to do it. But, uh, this whole area is just a petroglyphist's dream out here. Oh, wow, look. Some kind of, like, goat, mountain goat. A bunch of the stuff you can't really tell what it is. I mean, it's just everywhere. Like yeah, it really is just everywhere, though. Everywhere like you look. Ten of them on each rock. Yeah, at least. This one obviously broke off a bit just over the years, but look at these things. There's just—it's incredible that thousands of years later they are still very well preserved, and we're still on part one and two. There's still like. We still got over a mile to go. Yeah. So here is another interesting feature, formation, piece of art. And then right next to it, there is this very interesting geometrical design. Is that one on the list? Um, no, but it says somewhere in here that there's like geometric shapes. Yeah. Which is weird because like nothing out here is geometric. So like they like just came up with this stuff. Yeah, that's true. Because there's nothing in nature that's geometric like that. So most of these are south facing, so if you do come across a fork in the road uh, and you're walking up the hill, veer to your left, um, there are just tons and dozens and hundreds of these um, beautiful, beautiful works of art. And they must have had an insane uh, sunset out here uh, way back in the day. And they probably admired all their art. I know it's too cold for snakes, but being up here makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah? This is what snake homes look like. Next to the rest area, which is like the midway point on the trail, and uh, we came across a very, very large geometric shape. Very cool. And uh, this area seems to be Whoa. a like rabbit home or something. You can, you can see a bunch of droppings and pellets down there. Not quite sure what exactly it is, but I also feel like we've probably walked over a million <laughs> or two million uh, rattlesnakes hibernating because it is winter. You know what? I don't like rattlesnakes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we are stopping at the midway point. We're gonna head towards uh, White Sands for sunset, and uh, we have to drop Claire off at the uh, Greyhound bus station. Yeah. Yes, it is very sad. Um, Claire has been an awesome bus buddy for the past, uh, I don't know, shoot, a couple weeks, <laughs> a few weeks, so this will be a 
a very sad goodbye, but uh, we will see each other at some point in the future. I really think uh, sunset or sunrise would be the ultimate time to come here. Oh, by the way, this whole area is available for uh, overnight campsites. If you have the National Parks Pass, it's $3.50. I don't know how much it is without it. Um, it's not much. She not says much. it's like super cheap. Yeah. Oh, five bucks or six bucks or seven bucks. How would you rate this place on an archaeological scale? It's pretty dang cool. <laughs> <laughs> Holy mackerel! <laughs> yeah, I've been doing that. <laughs> uh, we're out at White Sands National Monument, and I can say it is uh, pretty sandy out here. Look at the view we just got here for uh, this amazing sunset. And uh, wow, all I gotta say is wow. The amount of contrast out here at sunset is incredible. I've been here before in the daytime. Sunset or sunrise is much, much better, especially for photographs. Um, yeah, <laughs> that's all I gotta say is wow. Got the bus down there, we got the lights on, we're gonna do a few photos. We got Claire right here freezing her little buns off. It's so cool. <laughs> I still got my crocodile hunter uh, shorts on. It's a little nipply out here, <laughs> to say the least. Woo! But goodness gracious, it is gorgeous. Wow! This is gonna be our final goodbye. Bye. Um, hopefully I'll see you soon. Yeah. Sooner rather than later. Mm -hmm. Yes. Until next time. Oh, and by the way, people seem to like you in the comments. <laughs> you, Mom. <laughs> oh man, what a day. I'm so exhausted. And I'm all by myself now. No Aria, no Claire. <laughs> oh man, no Jake, no uh, who else was with me? <laughs> I think that was the last three bus, uh, bus friends. Um, yeah, fantastic day. We will get on the road tomorrow. I have no idea where I'm going whatsoever. Well, I know where I'll be like on the 5th of January. That's like either Quartzsite or Ehrenberg for the Palooza. Then the 11th is going to be the RTR. I know a lot of people have been asking if I'm going to be there. So yes, officially I will be there. If any of you guys are in the area and you want to stop by, or if you're in a, I don't know, within a couple hours, you want to come for, I don't know, a couple days, weekend, whatever, it is... BLM land, you are free to be there. It is a massive event with lots of people, hundreds of people. Feel free. There's a, um, if you want to look it up, it's uh, on Bob Wells' channel, Cheap RV Living. Very informational channel, by the way, uh, for anyone who's interested in a mobile lifestyle. Highly recommend it, along with the other similar channels. Um, yeah, um, that's about it. I'll see you guys tomorrow.